This place is really special for wildlife because um, it's actually quite reachable if you compare it to other places in Suriname. There are lots of the places that have a lot of wildlife. Then you have to travel for like 10 hours or you have to fly to the interior. And this place actually is reachable by car in three hours, four hours. And all of the great mammals occur here. We have more than 330 species of birds already recorded here. And yeah, we're still busy finding as much species as possible here and uh, supporting the research in this area. But everybody's really enthusiastic every time new species are discovered here. Bullet end. You can actually recognize them by sort of yellow spots on their legs, the end of their legs. And they can, they can bite as well. They have really big, big pinches like here. Oh really? So they can but sting and they can bite. Yeah, but the biting is not uh, not so bad. Not venomous. But the stinging is. <laughs> yeah. But the stinging actually hurt a lot more than uh, than the biting. And when it was actually stuck on my arm, it couldn't get loose anymore. So it tried to bite me to get out its, its stinger, like push itself forward. This is a telephone tree. So when people used to be lost in the forest, they used this tree to find their way out. So you could alarm someone and someone else could answer by another telephone tree. And that's the way how they could find each other. Someone needs to make a call? Asu? A lot of lizards uh, store their fat and their energy in their tails. Uh, this one you can see it's pretty healthy. The species also in, in Dutch it's called Knolstaitrekka. Mm -hmm. uh, fat tailed gecko, <laughs> something like that. The funny thing is that when they walk through, for example, on a flat surface, they walk horizontally, they, wanna, don't, they don't want to get any dirt in there. So they actually move their fingers up. Look, it's, it's all the way flexible oh. to the oh. upside. Hmm. So there's no bones or anything in there. Yeah. So they actually move it up and with coiled up toes they walk over, for example, a table or anything. Fred flew over here from the interior to the city a few years back in uh, 2014 and he actually saw this mountain lying here and he wanted to visit it so six months later he put out a few expeditions to, to find it and he had no GPS or anything he just did it on his own with a machete through the jungle and actually found it and he wanted to share this with a lot of other people. So, and it is a really, really beautiful spot. We were able to make a camp on the top of the mountain. And from here on, you can see the macaws and the monkeys and everything coming by. It's a really, really special place. It's Atelopus Hoogmoedie. One of the... The rarest families in, uh, in the amphibian world because they really have big problems with uh, chytrid fungus. It's a, a sort of fungus that that kills a lot of these, these creatures and some have really big problems with the climate change because, because the world gets warmer they want to go higher and higher to stay in the same temperature and yeah, eventually they can. So they can't go any higher and they start going extinct. And these this species actually is primarily in lowland forest and it's quite common in Suriname. And it's a really, really pretty one. This one is a female. Hummingbirds. 
Some frogs we found here, one of them was the gladiator tree frog. It's uh, a typical one for the dry season here, so when the water gets lower, at some places you get these sand banks. And the gladiator tree frog is actually one of the few frogs that is able to put his eggs right next to the water uh, of a river. Most frogs can't put their eggs in there because the fish will eat it. And these actually they make their own sort of pool next to the water in the sand and they call for the females. If the females come, they put the eggs in there. And when the, when the young hatch, they can actually the, they can stay in the pool for a while until they hatch. And then when they hatch and grow a little bigger, sometimes the, the pool breaks and they go into the water and they at least had a sort of a head start in their development. There's really, really big frogs. They're about this size. And in the dry season, as long as it gets evening, then they start making noise and you can hear it everywhere.